Hello. I'm just waiting for a few more people to join. Hi. I hope everybody's doing well today. So I wanted to hop on here and talk to you about trusting yourself and trusting your heart. And I think this is such a great time to be having this conversation. So if you saw my post earlier today, my guide with Scribd, Trust Your Heart, Lead Your Journey to Self-Discovery from Within is now live. You can both read it online. Um, if you go to the link in my bio, you'll be able to access it. Um, or listen to it in my voice. So if you are looking for, you know, someone to make you feel like you are understood in your pain and in your heartbreak and in your fear of being in new relationships or trusting people again, that's going to be the perfect thing for you to go and check out because I literally guide you through the process of trusting yourself and at the same time it's not like this is what you need to do it's gonna feel like a big hug but at the same time a true step-by-step -step process to really transform your life and not just be like one thing that you read and then you just forget about it altogether so um I'm just seeing some of the comments I have here. So I actually have, so you won't be able to get the guide itself in a paperback form. It's just going to be on the Scribd app or website, whatever you choose to access. And if you haven't noticed, you do get a 60 day free trial if you click the link in my bio. So you'll have access to it and to a whole bunch of other content. But I myself printed this guide off and um, it's really thick, but I printed it like double-sided so that, you know, you save paper. But I did it so that I could go through it and make sure that everything looked good. So I have it right here with me. So if you guys have any questions or anything that you're wondering about, I would love to answer um, anything that has to do with how to learn to trust yourself. Even if it has to do with how do I get over someone breaking my trust? How do I get to a point where I feel like I am open to being in new relationships or not necessarily just romantic relationships, but even friendships or rekindling relationships with family where maybe that trust was broken? Um, anything I would love to answer. Pray for Turkey, yes, absolutely. Not just pray, but send whatever you can I did share a story earlier. Um, I see Scribd is here, hi. <laughs> um, I shared a story earlier uh, with links to where you can help Turkey. So of course, yes, I have shared stories for those of you who are wondering. So <laughs> I would love to see any questions or comments on trusting your heart. Yes. The website is, it's at the link in my bio. So if you leave this live and then there's that link at the bottom, it's try.scribd.com forward slash Sabian. You will be able to, um, yeah. Why haven't, hold on, this is a question. Why haven't, why hasn't anyone proposed to me yet? I'm in my twenties and still single, sad. I'm 32, so. There's no reason to be sad. What What's there to be sad about? You need to be with the right person at the right time. Don't bind yourself to a timeline. That's actually one of the things I wrote in this guide, literally word for word. Don't bind yourself to a timeline. If you think that at some point it's time for you to decide that you want to spend the rest of your life with someone, then that's your time. But to say I need to be married by a certain age or I need to start a family by a certain age, then what happens is you will settle for what's there and what's available to reach that deadline that you have in mind, which you probably didn't come up with. Probably society or your family or how you were raised came up with that for you. You have to do what's right for yourself. So, yes. 
And I will tell you exactly where it is and in what chapter, um, because this is part of right here it's in chapter six so in chapter six I get you to plan on how you're going to be there for yourself so one of the things is be your own advocate and I talk about that a lot I talk about being becoming the center of your safety network for yourself um, don't bind yourself to a timeline it's right here see your opinion on one-sided love how to deal with it so again I'm going to bring that back to the topic of trusting your heart so with one-sided love I really want you to ask yourself is that really love do you really love someone who isn't available to you? Do you really love someone who isn't offering you love? Do you really love someone who doesn't see you for who you are? Do you really love someone who isn't willing to do what it takes to be with you and to love you? Would you call that love? Or would you call that trying very hard to prove that you deserve love? And maybe you're trying to do it by trying to convince that person to love you so that you could say I deserve love but I guarantee you you do not love someone who does not love you and maybe you have that kind of love where it's like you want to see them grow you want to see them happy but to love them in that romantic way when you're not getting absolutely anything in return that's not love that's self-abandonment that's self-betrayal and I'm not saying it so that you could judge yourself I'm saying this, this so that you could be aware that what you're experiencing, if anything, just shows how in need of that love you are and how in need you are of someone telling you, you are worthy, I want to connect with you, I want to be close to you. But what happens when we put that power in someone else's hand is again bringing back to the topic of self-trust is I trust someone else to give me what I need more than I trust myself I trust someone else to dictate how much love I deserve or don't deserve I trust someone else with my fate my destiny where I'm headed in life in relationships whatever it is so when you are able to fully trust in yourself, build that relationship where you give yourself first what you need, and I don't mean we don't need people. I made that very clear in this guide. Just because you say, I trust myself, I don't need other people, it doesn't mean you don't need other people. You're just learning to discern between who are the people who you actually have connections with, people who see you for who you truly are. There was a point in this guide where I actually paused when I wrote the word seen, like people who make you feel seen. And I talked so much about how important it is to surround ourselves with those people. When we achieve a level of trusting ourselves so much, we don't, like we can't stand being in an environment where we are not fully seen for who we are, where we are made to feel like we have to leave parts of ourselves behind to be welcome in that environment. But trusting ourselves and our ability to live, survive, function outside of that bond that we are trying so hard to keep by shutting ourselves down, that's the ultimate goal, is you can't protect yourself from people leaving you. You can't protect yourself from people breaking your trust, but what you can do is trust that you will be able to get through it, survive past it, that you will be able to have a life beyond it, that you will be able to find new people who will see you for who you are and love you for who you are. That's why it's so important to bring that connection back to yourself I know there were a few people who said they're not staying for long just because they can't. I will post this after so you will have access to it. 
Should I give my ex another chance now that he is going to therapy and saying he will be better? So that is up to you. The decision to allow someone back into your life after they've broken your trust, after they've broken whatever it is that the relationship you had was built on, that foundation, after that's been broken, that is your choice. And there is absolutely no judgment with what choice you make. What I talk about in this guide when it comes to rebuilding trust with someone is that you have to look at this relationship that you have with this person who at some point broke your trust as a new relationship. You are building something new. And I know people say, but we knew each other for so long and this is what you have to remember. Whatever it is that you built your like the foundation of your relationship on. We built it on, we trust each other. We are going to be honest with each other. We are going to be transparent with each other. We are working towards a future together. When they broke that trust, they broke that foundation. So now you can't just look past what they did and what they broke and say, as long as we're back together, that's all that matters. You actually have to rebuild a new foundation. And you know what the most important element of this foundation is? That you walk into it with trust in yourself and in your ability to truly present yourself as you are in this relationship, be your authentic self. And that doesn't mean I have nothing to work on. It doesn't mean you know, that you're, you're entering it and you're just going to have no boundaries whatsoever and you're just going to be 100% just, I'm in full acceptance, there's nothing I need to do, there's nothing I need to work on, that's not what I mean. I mean, you present yourself with the challenges that you're facing and you don't think to yourself, well, maybe if they see those challenges, they're not going to love me the way that they would love me if I presented myself as a perfect person. So you need to trust that the best version of you that could be present in this relationship is the real authentic version. And if that means that that person is going to walk away and look down upon you, then that's not your person. You have to trust that you will be able to walk away. You have to trust that you will be able to build and set boundaries as they come along like as opportunities come along where you find that you have to set those boundaries that you have to speak your mind that you have to speak your truth that you have to be yourself to me that's one of the most important elements to that foundation yes it's a foundation to a relationship with someone else but you are part of that relationship you don't leave yourself behind to enter that relationship so i hope that answers your question never iron out a crinkled piece of paper flat and uncrinkled again exactly thank you for saying that so something that broke needs to be not just repaired so actually one of the things i talked about in this guide thank you for that comment because it reminded me of this is it is very important to pay attention to your gut when you're in a relationship of any sort romantic or not of your intuition and what it tells you and when someone, for example, hurts you in a way, whether it's by not listening to you, not hearing you, accusing you of something you didn't do, or when you speak your mind or talk about how something made you felt, feel, um, how something made you felt, <laughs> how something made you feel, um, their response might be to minimize it or to say you have no right to think that or feel that or trust me in that moment your gut was telling you this is wrong this doesn't feel good because all I'm trying to do is to express how that person's actions affected me and how they made me feel I'm not making any accusations I'm just saying this is how I felt 
So what we tend to do in moments like that when our gut tells us, hold on, pause, take a second, something's not right here because you just opened your heart up and you were being vulnerable and you were met with minimization, maybe even, you know, this person's trying to tell you how they think you should feel. Maybe they're gaslighting you out of your own experience telling you, no, this didn't happen this way, but you know it happened this way. Your gut knows in that moment that something's wrong. And it's very, very important for you to go back in the process of rebuilding trust within yourself. It's very important that you go back to those moments and remind yourself that, you know what? You do trust yourself, but you've allowed your trust in others to override your trust in yourself. Like that trust is there. It's, it's readily available for you to use. Your body is telling you something's wrong here. And now you can decide moving forward, I'm actually going to listen to that. Instead of just making that go away and saying, how do we get over this? Truly try to resolve it. Like look at whether there was an attempt to repair whether there was an apology, whether there was an acknowledgement, and if those things weren't there and you decided you're gonna move forward with this relationship, then you are setting the expectation for what's accepted and not accepted. And again, I'm not saying this out of judgment, I'm saying it out of, this is your learning journey to go back and look at the moments when maybe you did do that, maybe you did say, even though there was a big waving red flag here, I really just wanted the relationship to work. We've all gone through something like this, you know? You just, you don't want to do the hard thing of saying, you know what, I'm gonna walk away, or this is not working, or this needs a lot of effort. But now that you're on this journey of rebuilding trust within yourself, you can go back to those moments and give yourself permission to feel the anger that maybe you didn't feel back then. Give yourself permission to feel the sadness the frustration that you didn't feel back then and tell yourself moving forward, when my gut tells me something here is wrong, there was no attempt to repair, then really listen to it and give yourself what you need. If it's space, if it's distance, if it's saying, listen, moving forward, when I come to you with a, just an expression of how I feel or an expression of something I want or don't want anymore. I need you to listen. I need you to hear me out. I need you to validate that for me. So that's, and, and again, that reflects self-trust so much because you're not saying, I'm willing to do anything for this person to not leave. You're saying, I trust that I will be able to get through this, whether this person agrees or not. How do I forgive? How do you forgive a person who cheated on you? So I talk about this in this guide as well. So if you're looking for like longer strategies, stories and stuff like that, please go read it. But for me, the forgiveness part is not about saying what they did was okay, ever. It's not about saying what they did wasn't bad enough. It's not about saying everybody goes through this. You know, you hear people say stuff like, you know, most people cheat and they're, it's just the way that life is. And you don't have to believe that. I don't believe that. I used to fall for it and believe it, but now I'm like, no, I, I don't choose to believe that to be the truth because I'm somebody who would never cheat. So if I exist, other people like me exist, you need to speak to yourself in that way and choose what you do believe about those narratives. So it's very important for you when you are contemplating that forgiveness is to really, again, in learning to trust yourself and to trust your heart is to say, how did this make me feel? How did this betrayal, because cheating is a betrayal, it's also dishonesty, it's lies, it's lack of transparency, it's, it hurts. So you have to sit with yourself and say, how did this make me feel? And why is it right now that I'm asking myself, how do I forgive? Is it because I want to 
truly move on from this relationship or is it because I'm trying to make this relationship work or rebuild it? Like, what's the intention there? Because based on the intention, what you have to let go of is going to be very different. If you're still in a relationship with the person and you're letting go of the fact that they cheated on you, they will play a very big part in that repair and in that healing because they are with you there with the validation that what I did was wrong, what I did hurt you, I knew it was hurting you, I knew I shouldn't have done it, I will do whatever it takes to rebuild that bond of trust with you or to start a whole new bond with you. If you are looking to forgive someone because you want to move forward with your life and maybe get into new relationships or not at all, but just be able to not think back to it and be so hurt every single time. But even if you choose to forgive them and forgiveness is about letting go, again, it's not about saying what happened was okay or that it doesn't affect you anymore. You might think of that cheating incident in 20 years and still feel that pain in your heart and there's nothing wrong with that. But the choice to forgive is the choice to let go. The choice to forgive is the choice to say, what that person did to me, their choice to betray me, their choice to break me, their choice to hurt me, their choice to lie to me multiple times, because cheating isn't just a one-time decision, right? Has nothing to do with me. I trust in my worthiness of honesty. I trust in my worthiness of someone being loyal to me. I trust in my worthiness of the truth. I trust in the fact that the way that this incident made me feel is exactly the way it made me feel. It's not that I'm over-exaggerating it or that I'm just being overly sensitive or that I should get over it. No. I need to look at myself as if I'm looking at someone else going through this and tell myself exactly what I would tell them. That's awful. That really sounds like it hurt. That would hurt the same way for me too. You need to sit with yourself and say those things to you, to yourself, to you, <laughs> and give yourself that validation instead of forcing yourself to get to a point where you're like, I'm past this. And you also need to promise yourself. So in this guide, I actually prompt you to make a list of promises to yourself based on what's happened in the past in any kind of breaking of your trust, not just when it comes to infidelity, to make a list of never again promises. And these promises could be never again will I accept, you know, somebody minimizing my feelings. Never again will I accept somebody and i don't mean accept as in you don't accept that that just happened i mean that you will pause and that you will speak your mind and speak your heart and say what hurt you and decide what you're going to do moving forward so in the process of forgiveness of letting go you need to make those promises to yourself and genuinely decide that moving forward what happened to me doesn't define me what someone else chose to do defines them. You have to let go of what that must have meant about you because it didn't mean anything about you. And I always say this, even if you get to a dark place where you're sitting there saying, well, maybe they cheated because I was behaving a certain way or wasn't giving them certain things, whatever the excuses that you give yourself are that person could have come to you and said, this is how I'm feeling. I don't wanna be with you anymore. I'm thinking about being with someone else. They could have given you that honesty, but they chose to continue making you believe that they are loyal to you and went behind your back and did something that broke that loyalty and that trust. So you need to give yourself the right to say, that was wrong and I'm not defining myself by what you did. And as I said, if it's because you're, you're trying to forgive them and to let go just because you want to move forward with the relationship, they have to be one billion percent in on acknowledging how wrong it was and giving you that commitment that they 
want to rebuild and restart a new connection with you that is built on mutual trust. And again, if you walk into that with self-trust, which by the end of this guide, I'm really hoping that you will have that, there is a very minimal chance that you will allow those red flags to go by because, as I said, you're not so desperate for the connection to continue. You trust in yourself and in your worth so much and in your ability to get through life without that person that you thought you couldn't live without. That's what self-trust does. It gives you that power to lead your own life instead of to depend on somebody else for you to feel good. The guide I'm talking about, Abby, is asking, it's trust your heart, lead your journey to self-discovery from within. It's my scribed original. Um, if you go to the link in my bio, you will find, it'll take you directly to it and you'll get a 60 day free trial um, just if you click that link. So it's to the people who follow me, who come to my work. Uh, for them to access it and a bunch of other content. So I actually have right here, I printed out the marketing plan that we had for it. And so it has all the covers here. So this is what it would look like. That's the cover of it. And it's out today. So you'll be able to go read it and listen to it in my voice right now. Ooh, I feel compassion and empathy fatigue. I have collapsed into myself and I have lost my voice. Wow, that's, wow. I've felt that many times before. Compassion and empathy fatigue. So here's what's happening. You are giving so much of yourself to other people. You are giving so much of your energy, your attention, your love, your kindness, your effort, your time. To other people and when you don't replenish that for yourself again no judgment but it does reflect lack of giving yourself the right to exist with the same privileges that you are giving the people around you you are putting yourself at number nine or 10 on your priority list, if that. So many people and so many things come ahead of you where you're like, I'm giving here and I'm giving here and I'm giving here and I'm giving here. And what you think when you're doing all that giving is that you are proving your worthiness. Again, in this guide, I prompt you to go back to all of the stories before, whether it's in your childhood or after that, that have shaped for you your belief that I am what I do, as opposed to I am who I am. When you believe I am what I do, you're going to do and give more to feel like you are more. And that's very, very dangerous. You are who you are. You don't need to exert yourself and to give more of yourself or to abandon yourself, as in I'm doing stuff for people when I need to be doing stuff for myself, but I know that doing stuff for people is going to make me feel good about myself, but it's not really filling you up with anything. It's just, it's, it's an illusion. You think you feel better about yourself when you give more to others, but when you're not giving anything to yourself, you are wilting bit by bit. You need to be able to give yourself what you need and give yourself the right to believe that. So that empathy you're giving to others, direct it towards yourself. That compassion you're giving to others, please take a few minutes a day to sit with yourself and give yourself the words, the love, the actions that you need based on what you're going through. So. That's how you combat that fatigue. You're fatigued because you don't have any of that stuff. You're pushing it out so much. You need to not just stop yourself from giving it to others. It's not, that's not the answer because you, you can still give others, but include yourself in that giving and also make sure that again, you are at the top of that priority list. That doesn't make you selfish. It makes you someone who knows your worth 
and someone who is investing in a relationship with yourself. I hope this helps. Your voice sounds like you are broken. I think we're all broken. I'm broken and I've put myself back together, which is what I hope other people will do too. But I actually feel great today. Let's see. Oh my, there's so many comments. How long will it be available? Oh, it'll be available. Just, it's there, it's not going away. So, um, read it whenever you can. Why do I keep self-sabotaging any new potential relationship by mistrusting everyone? So I'm gonna give you maybe a controversial answers, but we have a hard time trusting others when we don't trust ourselves. You could say all you want, I trust myself, I just don't trust other people. But if you say you trust yourself, then part of that self-trust is that you are not going to stop yourself from opening yourself up to other people just out of the fear of them breaking your trust. A big part of self-trust is trusting that you will be able to get through them breaking your trust if they choose to. Okay, I need you to hear that again. I Let me try to go back to the exact chapter where I talk about this again. It's actually very, very early on um, where one of the things I talk about is I say, you know, after our trust is broken or our heart is broken, one of the first things we say is never again. Never again will I trust someone else. Never again will I open my heart to someone else. Never again will I get into another relationship because I just don't trust people and I talk you through how important it is to sit with that never again and say, I don't judge myself for saying never again. My heart is actually trying to protect me from a very bad and painful pain that I went through. And so that never again is just trying to protect you but it's very important for you to tell that never again, I trust that I will be able to get through someone else breaking my heart and my trust. The only way for me to form connections with people is to be open and vulnerable. Their willingness to break that trust, their willingness to use that vulnerability against me, their willingness to lie to me, doesn't mean anything about me. That's a big part of self-trust. That's a big part of being secure in who you are and in relationships. I believe it's in chapter one, which is building trust happens through self-discovery. So, um, yes, I would like you to go and read it there if you need more guidance than what I just gave you right now. I was reading your book today and I had a huge breakthrough. Like everything clicked in somehow. Yay. I'm so happy that it's doing that for you. So, um, let's see. Oh, wow. We have been on this live for a while, but that's okay. I want to answer more questions. Let's see. Aw, someone said, the way you put yourself back together after you have been broken is beautiful. Thank you. My hope is that everybody could do that. Um, here someone is asking how long did it take you to heal? So I'm going to talk about my journey towards my own self-trust, which I did talk about in here. And actually, as we were recording the audiobook uh, a few weeks ago, there were certain parts that I was reading where I would start reading and then I would tear up and start crying. It was very difficult for me to talk about certain things, but I wanted to lead by example and show you this is how you truly discover who you are and you come in touch with yourself and this is how you get to a place where you fully trust yourself. It is so important that you reflect back on the moments when your body was telling you something. It was telling you, pause, think about this, this doesn't feel right, and you overrode that because what you're doing now is when you go back to those moments, you are literally telling yourself because you are telling your body, I am so sorry. 
that you gave me a signal that I didn't listen to, but I'm not going to judge myself for doing that because at that time with the resources I had, with my fears, with what I thought I could get through, with the limits of my survival mode, that is what I thought was the best thing to do, is to trust someone else's recollection of my experience more than my own, is to trust someone else's truth over mine, is to walk in someone else's story and, and leave my story to walk in theirs. It's very important to do that. And again, self-forgiveness and letting go of that judgment or that shame. Instead of judging or shaming your past self in moments where you didn't listen to what your body was telling you, you have to sit with those with compassion and empathy and tell them, you know, this is the best you could do. I'm not going to leave you behind. I'm not going to try to erase you from my memory. I, You are part of me and you are coming here with me. Moving forward, we're not going to do this anymore. So I share quite a few stories in here that will show you how I dealt with that and got to a point where, don't get me wrong, self-trust is not easy. And you don't, you don't just say, I trust myself, therefore my life is going to be easy. You are still going to go through pain. I even wrote in here, you have to be open to the possibility of heartbreak, but also you have to be open to the possibility of connection and love and genuine, you know, connectedness with others. And you have to just trust that whatever it is that happens, whatever the outcome is, it's not a reflection of you. You are choosing to live your truth and to be authentic and to trust in yourself and to present this authentic version of you in relationships. What happens as a result of that, a big part of self-trust is saying, that's not on me. And, and it's not about blaming other people. Sometimes they make mistakes where you can blame them, but sometimes relationships just don't work because there's no compatibility. And Part of self-trust is just seeing the truth for what it is and, again, believing that you can get past this. I talk about survival mode quite a bit in here, so make sure you read those sections and understand what your survival mode is because that's likely what is stopping you from getting to that point where you put yourself first and ahead of others as in, when it comes to trust, do I trust myself, my judgment, my experience, or do I trust theirs? Because there's a big price to pay for when, when what you know you lived is not being validated by the other person. And if you say, I trust my judgment and myself over what you're telling me, there is a big price. There's a big possibility that they will walk away, that they will withhold their love from you or withhold whatever it is that you were getting from them and so there's put they're putting you in a position where you have to choose between yourself and that connection that you think you have so a big part of self-trust is being willing to let go of that and that hurts so a big part of it is just accepting that you are human and that you're going to continue going through these experiences especially if you decide that you are going to be your authentic self. I'll take one more question. Aw, thank you. Um, this comment about my voice being filled with compassion. I hope that comes through when you actually, when you listen to this guide, because I really put my whole heart into it. All right, I'll take one more question. How do we deal with feeling lost? Great question. This is the last one I will answer. And again, I'm going to post this after, so don't worry about getting all the other questions. <sighs> From my experience, when you feel lost, that's not always an indication that something is wrong with you or like a lot of times we feel lost because we might be following a path that we are not leading. A lot of times we feel lost because we are paving our own path and there's no certainty ahead because this is 
brand new, we're taking risks, we're being ourselves, we're not following what that person wants of us or that person expects of us, and that is scary. And you might feel lost because you're like, where am I? But then you have to remember, I'm paving a new road. I'm building a life for myself that I never thought possible. So that feeling of being lost it could be due to either of those, but it could also be due to thinking that you need to be somewhere in life that you're not there yet. Or it could be because you have lost track of who you truly are because you've spent so much time around people who are trying to feed you who you are. So the fact that you're feeling lost is a great sign from your body telling you, let's slow down and let's figure things out. So that's a, to me, that's a big sign that you are actually listening to your body because you've, you've named it. I feel lost. So what I would do in a situation like that is close your eyes and sit with that. I feel lost. Why do I feel lost? Contemplate some of the options that I gave you earlier. Um, do I actually feel lost or do I just feel very uncertain? Do I actually feel lost or I just feel, do I just feel like I'm in an environment where I am not fully seen for who I am? Like that could really shake you up, right? And then what would it feel like to not feel lost? You know that I can't give you this answer. You will know that and trust that whatever answer is coming from within, you will feel what you need to do. You, you might feel like you need to get up and go for a walk. That's listening to what your body's telling you. And then maybe on that walk, you're gonna be, because you're already listening, something else is gonna come up, an idea, a thought, a feeling about the next thing that you can do or that you should do or that you can try. Above all, I will tell you, when you are feeling lost, make sure that you are not seeking to be found by someone else. Make sure that you are not seeking the answer, the destination, the location you're headed to outside of you. When you're feeling lost, come back to yourself. And if you've never taken that path towards yourself, it is going to be scary because I'm sure what that means is that you have been taught that the path for you to feel good about yourself and to be welcomed is away from yourself. And you want to change that narrative. You want to say, the path for me feeling seen and heard and validated and worthy and just being myself is towards myself, my heart my body, my intuition. And that path that you're taking towards yourself to be found within so that you, and then the beautiful thing about finding yourself is there's no going back. Once you feel how beautiful it feels to be with yourself and to say, I am my home. And I do talk about home in this guide as well. I am my home. I am my safety network. I am the place I go to when I need this or that. I am, again, it's not saying I don't need people, but it's just saying I will never leave myself to feel those things outside of me. When I am able to give those things to myself, I know with other people what the bare minimum to accept is. But if I can't give myself the bare minimum, when I'm with other people, I'm gonna accept the scraps that they give me because I don't know more. I hope this helps and I just saw so many comments. I can read them afterwards, I'm pretty sure. I'm gonna upload this right now. If you haven't yet, go to the link in my bio. I would love for you to read Trust Your Heart, Lead Your Journey to Self-Discovery from Within. I am just opening up again to the cover so that you could see it. It's right here. It is available for you to read at the link in my bio. Again, you're getting a 60 day free trial. Um, you can also listen to it in my voice. And if you have any more questions, I'm, I've created a lot more content for this as I will as well. 
please leave them in the comments and maybe I'll create some more videos about those topics. So again, go to learn how to trust yourself. So go to trust your heart, lead your journey to self-discovery from within. It's a script original available for you to read and to listen to. Thank you so much and I'm sending you a big hug and trust yourself. Begin that journey today. Bye.